namespaces and usings in C Sharp are taken for granted. But sometimes you need to take a step back and really understand what is happening with something so you can truly master it. In this video, we're going to be looking at how namespaces and using statements work, how to take full advantage of them, and how they're changing in .NET 6. Now, if this is the first video you watched of mine, my name is Tim Corey, and it's my goal to make learning C Sharp easier. I provide videos twice a week here on YouTube to help you grow as a developer. I also have a full set of training courses on I am Tim Corey. I encourage you to check out all the resources I have to offer. Now in this video, as with most of my videos, I'm gonna create some source code. If you'd like a copy of the source code, you can use the link in the description to get that. Now let's go over to Visual Studio, but what you may notice is this is not Visual Studio 2019, which is the current version of Visual Studio. Instead, I'm using the preview version of Visual Studio 2022. In fact, this is um, preview 4.1 right now. And the reason for that is because we're going to do some work with .NET 6 in this video, and .NET 6 only works in Visual Studio 2022 from the, the UI perspective of, of doing the file new project. You can actually get uh, .NET 6 to work with your uh, Visual Studio 2019 if you use the command line to create the, um, the projects. But we're not gonna do that, we're gonna use 2022 and we're gonna start with a .NET 5 project and move on to a .NET 6 project. So we're just gonna do um, a new project here, we're gonna do console application and we're gonna choose, we're gonna call this our um, namespace demo and our namespace demo app. And we'll do .NET 5 for right now. We're gonna come back and do a .NET 6 version. There'll be some differences, but I wanna show you the kind of what you're used to with, um, with C Sharp right now, because there are some changes coming in .NET 6 that will make some shifts in how namespaces are treated. But I wanna go over first what namespaces are and how they work, and then we'll get into why these changes are happening and what they really mean for our applications. So let's hit create. And here is the standard uh, console application. We've got our, our uh, class program, our static void main, and we have our hello world uh, right line. So that's the standard application. Now let's talk first about namespaces. We have this namespace right here, which you're probably familiar with. This is the, it's called namespace demo. Why is it called that? Well, because we're in the namespace demo project. Therefore, we're gonna give the name of the namespace the same as the project name. Now, if I right click here and I say add, new folder, and let's call this, um, let's call this um, data. And in here, I'm gonna have a class, and let's call this my data access class. Now notice here that the namespace is namespace demo dot data. So what it's done is it said, okay, class name first, and then if you're in a folder, put that as part of the namespace with a dot in between. So namespace demo dot data dot data access. And we're kind of familiar with this, as what we use Traditionally in C Sharp, we don't usually modify these things, but that's how we talk to our, our classes in different namespaces. Now, if I want to access that, let's say I want to create that class, I'm going to say, instead of saying data access, because that won't work, it says, hey, I can't find that. I don't know what that is. Then what I need to do instead is say, uh, data dot data access and that works. And I can say uh, let's call it data access equals new like so. Okay, but I said data dot data access. Why did I do that? Well, because we're already in the namespace demo, so we're already in this namespace, but it's a sub portion of a namespace, a sub namespace called data. So namespace dot data, I mean namespace demo dot data dot data access. Therefore, we're already in namespace demo, 
therefore just data.data access. But the full name would be namespace demo dot data access. I'm sorry, dot data dot data access, which that's a mouthful. That's a lot. And so what we have is we have ways to shorten this up. And the way we do that is with using statements and using statements. What they do is just say, we're going to kind of collapse multiple things into one. Therefore, we're going to say, Hey, you know, let's, let's not have to type all this out. So let's create a using up here for namespace demo dot data. And then we can just say data access because it says, okay, look in here as well. That's what we have the using system for, because technically this is system dot console dot right line. So you have that using system at the top. Okay. So that's the standard way we do things. And there's a reason for this. So let's, let's take this off for right now. Let's go back to saying, uh, data dot. Now that's, that's, you know, that, that works, but let's create a couple more class or a couple of folders. Actually, let's create a folder called, um, oh, models. And in here, I want to create a class called person model. And, you know, we can, we can put stuff in here. Like that first name, first name, last name, just to have something in a person model, right? So we can come back over here and we can access a person model by saying either models dot person model like so, or we can say is have a using up here before we do that though, let's create another model in the data folder called person model. And let's in this one have an ID and a name. Okay. Sounds good. So this is a different model, but it has the same name, which yeah, you gotta be careful that you don't really want to have two things that is name the same, but have different values, but it's possible to do. And there are reasons to do this and it's okay to access this person model, because if you look at, um, model dot, we'll see first name and we're going to see down here, last name as well. So it has both of those. And if we were to say, let's come down here and say, uh, data dot person model, and let's create that. And now if we look at person model, this person model dot, we have name and ID. We don't have a conflict. All right. So that's fine. But what happens if we bring in our using statements? So using namespace demo, dot data and using namespace demo dot models. Let's bring both of those in and get rid of these additional pieces of information. Notice I have red squigglies now. Why do I have red squigglies? Well, because the person model is an ambiguous reference between namespace demo dot data dot person model and namespace demo dot models dot person model. It doesn't know which of these person model classes to choose from. And the reason why is because we brought both, we collapsed both of these into the same namespace. We we're looking at all three places and not specifying which one is which. So if we were to say data dot model person model, that's clearer. And if we were to say models dot person model, that's clear as well, but now I, I went the wrong direction. Um, let's swap those around. So, so now these match. Okay. So now this is, I know which one you're talking about because you're saying you reference the namespace or at least part of the namespace. Therefore we're good. I know which one is which, and we can, we can access that. But if you try and collapse it all down, and you have a name conflict, that's when you have a problem. The reason for these namespaces is to prevent these name conflicts. 
so that we don't have to have a enormous list of all the method names that Microsoft has ever created that we might want to use, but we can't because they're now reserved. The only way they're reserved is if we're bringing in the using statement for that particular area. And then we might have a conflict, which we can get around by just using the, the namespace or more of the namespace in order to specify this is the one I'm talking about, not that other one. So namespaces provide some uh, protection against naming conflicts. They also provide for us structure so that when I say namespace demo dot data, what do you think is in the data section? Well, probably things about data. Now I made it a little generic, but what do you think is in the dot models section? Well, probably things to do with models, data models. So this allows us to have some structure around our application. So this way we can say, I want to have, you know, all of my data stuff inside the data namespace, and it kind of groups things together. Now we already do this with folder structures. The namespace is just usually, usually match the, the structure we create with our folders. That doesn't always have to be the case though. We can create our own namespaces if we want. So for instance, if I'm in this um, data access class and it says namespace demo dot data, I'm going, I don't like that. I want this to be dot generic data. You can do that. It's not common practice. It's not great practice, but it can be done. And there can be reasons to do so. But in general, we leave the namespace to match the folder structure, just like we have the class name match the file name so that we have some consistency between the file system and the code that's inside of it. However, there may be times when it's important or valuable to match the namespace to something else besides just the folder structure. So with this, we can choose whatever we want. We could say, um, Tim is cool dot generic data. That is a valid namespace. Now, if it come over here, go to data access, it goes, I can't find that. We go, oh, no problem. I'm not sure why this is still here. Um, I can't find that. Not a problem. What we can do is we can say Tim dot is dot cool dot generic data dot data access, which that's a mouthful, but it is a on the way to reference this data access class. So we can have our own namespace to be whatever we want them to be, but we can also say, you know what, let's change the namespace to be something else. For example, what if I wanted to, let's create a new class. Um, let's create a class called, I'll put in data, but really could be anywhere. Um, better console better console. Okay. This is going to be my better console. That's going to work better than the console that Microsoft gives. So instead of having a console right line, we're going to have a, um, public class or public public method. There you go. Um, yeah, sorry. Um, uh, public string, uh, void. There we go. Wow. I'm blanking here. Public void. Um, better right line like so, and we'll make that public as well. And now in here, we're going to do a console right line. This is a better right line like so, whatever, you know, this is just a demo. Okay. But I have this better console, but right now it's in the namespace demo dot data. I can change this namespace to be system. System comes from Microsoft. Okay. But I've chosen to put it in the system directory anyways. Now, when I say system dot, I have 
console or I have better console. You see how my method showed up, or my, sorry, my class showed up because of the fact that I put it in the system namespace. This allows us to merge namespaces, even ones we don't control. I don't control the system namespace. That comes from Microsoft, but I can stick my own things in there. Now, a word of warning here, a word of caution. Just because you can, doesn't mean you should all the time. Don't just decide that this means you're, you're gonna put all this stuff in inside of Microsoft's namespaces. You could do that, but note that Microsoft's not keeping track of your code so that if they put new stuff in the system namespace, it's not gonna conflict with Microsoft stuff, but it may conflict with your stuff if you put your stuff in the system as well. So this could create breaking changes for you where it's not a breaking change for anybody else because no one else is messing with that namespace. So be careful of it, but there are times when this might be a valuable thing to do to add something to a different namespace. So there's some cool stuff you can do there where, hey, you, you put your own stuff in a, a namespace that, that's not even yours, which means also, if we come back over here, I have a using system up here. Let's pretend I didn't have this, well, either of these. So I don't have a using for namespace demo dot data for better console, but I can still come down here and say better console dot, or, you know, B equals new better console and then say B dot, you know, better right line like so. I don't have to have a namespace because of the fact that it's in the system namespace, which is usually already included in our namespaces. So there are benefits there as well, where you can bring something in that's already usually there and kind of tag along with it. If you've got stuff that you always want to be available uh, without using the namespace. So there's some things you can play around there with namespaces, but Let's address this one right here. Tim is cool dot or Tim dot is dot cool dot generic data. That's an awful big mouthful, but sometimes maybe you can't just put a using up here for Tim dot is dot cool dot generic data. Maybe you have that naming conflict between two different things. You don't want to step on any toes. So there is a way around that. We could say um, using, I'm gonna say Timothy. And the reason I say Timothy is because Tim already exists as a namespace. So Timothy equals Tim.is.cool.generic data. What I've done here is create an alias for a namespace called Timothy. Now, Timothy cannot be the name of a namespace. So that's why I couldn't use Tim because Tim is a namespace. Therefore, it wouldn't know it's the namespace or it's the alias. So this way, it has to be a unique name. But with this, I can say Timothy.dataaccess. So, and that just works in this file, but this allows me to alias a using statement with something that's shorter, that's um, clearer, and allows for less typing and less uh, horizontal code use. So some cool stuff there with using statements as well. Now that's the, the generic or general stuff that we're dealing with with namespaces. Namespaces are, like I said, they kind of sit in the background and just work. And by default, we keep the structure of the, the project name is the root namespace, and then we have the folder structure in here that we follow uh, for sub items. You know, so person model in here is namespace demo dot data because it's in the dot data folder. That's the general thing that we do with namespaces. So let's talk now about .NET 6. Right click on your solution and say add new project, console application. Let's call this um, um, let's call this 
.NET 6 console instead, so it's clear which one it is, and we're going to choose the .NET 6 preview. Now, if you don't have Visual Studio 2022 installed um, or the, the .NET 6 preview bits, then this might not work in your machine, but you can uh, watch it on mine. Let's close everything else out but this. And let's look at, I'm gonna actually put some line breaks in here so you can come down a little more. Let's get rid of the code comment. This is the new program.cs for a console app. Now you may be freaking out and saying, Tim, where's all the code? Because it's got one line of code here. And yes, you do, and that's all it needs. In fact, if we were to um, set this as startup project and run this, this would run just like any other console app, hello world. And yet we have just one line here. So let's talk about what's where everything is. So let's go back to our, uh, our program.cs from .NET 5. And in here we had using system and namespace of namespace demo. Okay, let's start there. We're missing those over here. There is no namespace of .NET 6 console, and there is no using system. And the reason why is because we have the idea of file-based namespaces. So by default, what the system is doing is saying, hey, I know what namespace you're in. You don't have to specify it because we normally follow the file structure. Therefore, that's what I'm going to assume unless you tell me differently. So why do we have these namespaces over here? Why do we say namespace demo when that's what we always use? We always use the, the project name as the root namespace and we always use the folder structure underneath as the, the sub um, namespaces. If we always do that, then let's assume it. And that's what we did here. We assumed it, which got rid of that namespace declaration and it got rid of, note, we indent one line here or one uh, tab indent or spaces indent for the class because of it's inside the namespace. Well, we don't have to do that here because we don't have to specify the namespace. It's being, it's implied. So with that being implied, we get rid of one level of code indents that we don't need, and we get back a little bit more horizontal code space. So that's one of the new things in .NET is this assumption. So if I were to create a, a new, let's create a new directory or new uh, folder, let's call it data. And in here, we're gonna create a class. And let's call it person model. Now we have all of this because the fact the class is, this class template has not been updated. So what we can do is we can say, you know what, get rid of all of this and get rid of that last curly brace and let's bring that back. That still works. And I can still say um, prop int first name, I'm sorry, ID, and there's our name, okay? So there is our two properties that will work. And if we reference the person model in our, right here, we can say, instead of just saying person model, if we say person model, it's going to assume that person model is in the same namespace, okay? we have that reference right here. So it says, okay, I'm gonna assume it's in the same namespace, which it's not. It actually should be in the data namespace. So, um, so what we can do here is we say, no, we want this to be a different namespace. We can say, okay, no problem. Using dot net six console dot data, like so, I'm sorry, namespace. Namespace of .nexus console.data. 
So this is another new feature of .NET 6 where we say, hey, if you do need to specify a namespace, no problem. You can go ahead and do that, but just say what the namespace is at the top, call it good. And now this entire file is going to be inside of this namespace. So now we don't have to specify what the namespace is and notice that the person model isn't here yet. So using um, .NET 6 console dot data like so. Now, just so you know, there are a couple of quirks. This is still preview versions, preview bits. Um, the templates for the classes are still the old templates. I assume they'll be updated soon with the new templates. Also, um, I do think that this should be by default, uh, this namespace, because that's what the default normally would be. But, uh, and that may come down the road, but for right now, you can specify it this way, where you just say namespace, like that, like so. And you could specify something else. So if you want to specify Tim is cool dot data, um, you could do that as well. Now, the other thing to note here is that you can't decide to put another namespace down here. So I can't come down here and say namespace uh, Tim dot is dot cool. That's not going to work because the source file can only contain one file scope namespace declaration. It says, no, you, you can't do that because how we know what's in this namespace and what's in this namespace. We can say, well, the stuff underneath it. No, we're not, we're not going there. At least not for now. So in C sharp 10, we can't do that one namespace per file. And that declares for the entire file. But with that, we, we probably should want to follow that direction anyway, because the fact that just like we put one class per file, we should probably have one namespace per file. And if we wanted a file, like more stuff in other namespaces, we should probably create more class files or more, um, dot CS files. So the other thing to note here is we come back over to program.cs. Notice there's no, except for mine, there's no using statements here. And yet we have console.writeline and console is in the system namespace. So where is that using statement? Because there is one, it's just not here. So where did that using statement go? Well, if we right click on our project and say, open folder in file explorer. And then in here we can go to bin debug net six zero. And then inside of here, I'm sorry, not in bin OBJ, OBJ debug net six zero. There we go. That's the one we can see right down here. We have net six console dot global usings dot G dot C S. If we uh, drag that in to look at it, what this shows us is global using global system. So this is an auto generated file and it will be different depending on if you're using it for a, a desktop app, like a console app, or if you're using it for a web app, like a ASP.NET core app or blazer app, something like that or if you're using it for, I believe a worker service is different as well. So there are certain uh, default usings in here where it says, hey, you know what? Um, these are probably defaults that you wanna use across everything. Therefore, instead of specifying these seven things everywhere, we'll go ahead and collapse this list into one and say that these come by default. And that shows up in your OBJ folder and gets merged in. So if you want to look and see, oh, this is what's coming in, this is what's not. There you go. Now that's that's the default, but maybe you want to add your own. Like maybe I want to say, hey, you know what? I want this using statement all the time, everywhere. Well, you can create a file. It, the convention is still kind of solidifying here, but um, if you right click and say add, let's add a class file, but it's really going to be called um, our uh, our usings dot CS. I'll put the root and I'm going to get rid of this whole thing right here. Get rid of everything. And this is my global usings file. So I can say global using 
and then say .NET 6 console .data. I hit save. Oops, not open. Save. Then come back over here. Notice it's grayed out. It's no longer necessary to have that because I can still access person model in the .NET 6 console .data because of that global using. You only have to have this one time. So you create one folder or one file, I'm sorry, at the root called usings and put all of your global usings in that file and then the reference everywhere. But remember, you don't wanna to put too much stuff in here. It's not gonna hurt your application. It's not gonna slow things down really. What's gonna do though is it could cause naming conflicts. Remember that namespaces give us that separation for avoiding conflicts in names. So that if we have a person model in data and a person model in models, if we had both of those using statements together, as we saw, that would cause a naming conflict. So you don't wanna go overboard with this, but there's times where you say, you know, I'm always adding these using statements. Well, just put them as a global statement. They're accessible everywhere without the namespace on the front. So that makes our file a little easier. So that's, that's how the, um, the uh, using, global usings work. That's how the implicit global usings work, where they're kind of hidden, but they're there. I do want to point out, if you go to the .NET 6 console csproj file, there is this implicit using uh, that's enabled by default on new projects in .NET 6. If you upgrade a project from five to six, it will not be enabled by default. So that those global usings won't be turned on because they could be a breaking change. Again, naming conflicts. So you can come in here and add this implicit usings to a file for this .NET 6 and say enable, and that will turn those on. If you don't like them, go ahead and turn that off. That's another thing you can do. There's also another option so let's just say for whatever reason that you didn't like the fact that system was a global using. You liked everything else about the global usings, just not that one particular using. Not a problem. Come to your CSproj file. Oops, there we go. Uh, you can also right click and say edit project file to get this in case uh, just selecting it didn't work for you. But outside the property group, we're gonna say item group, and in here, we're going to say using remove system. And that will remove the system from the global using list. Now, console is going to error out on us. Notice the red squigglies. And it says, hey, um, it doesn't exist in the current context because you don't have that using. You'd have to either add it back or come down here and say system dot. And now it'll work. So you can take that out if you want by modifying your csproj file, or you can put it back in. You can also, so let's, um, let's keep it out for now, but let's just say that instead of um, having this global using here, maybe I don't want that. Okay, I'll comment that out, but that causes a problem over here. But you know, I say, I tell you what, I don't want that file hanging out there, but I'll come over here and I'm going to add a using. And instead of remove, what I'll say is include. And this is a, just a, a text file. Like there's no IntelliSense here, but let me copy and paste it. Paste that in there. That's now included in the global usings list. So now this is again available to us because it's in the global usings. So that's now the implicit global using. Whereas if we were to type it out in our usings file like this, that's explicit where we are saying this is a global using. Okay. Now there's another thing you can do as well. Let's create um, another class. I'll create it right in the root. Um, I'm going to call it the silly class because I'm going to say Tim. Uh, let's call it Tim. Let's call it Tim is cool. Tim is cool. 
okay? So Tim is cool is the namespace and for the silly class. But I don't want to reference, I don't want to say, I want us to say with silly s equals new like so. But how do I do that? Well, I can do this a number of ways, but maybe I want to say timothy.silly. Use that alias. And again, I could come up here and say using timothy equals tim.is.cool like so. That would work. But what if I don't want to have that using statement here? I want to have this alias available everywhere. Well, I can come over here and I can say using include tim.is.cool and then I can say alias Timothy. Now, this is not going to create a, I still have to use a namespace, the alias of Timothy, but this is now available everywhere as well. So I don't need this anymore. And this is still available to me. You can mouse over it. It's actually the namespace Tim is cool because we have it in our global settings. So there's some cool new stuff coming with .NET 6. This latest stuff, the stuff we're doing in this new project is all .NET 6 related. The big deal here is it's all about cutting down on the boilerplate, the stuff we have to do over and over and over again. The, the stuff that is just kind of a setup work that really can be uh, assumed in most cases. So again, if we compare, let's, let's close everything out with this and compare it to program.cs. Notice, first of all, this, this groove quite large. We have 21 lines. Now, uh, these lines, you know, um, we can, we can exclude, but that's only, uh, six, eight lines. So there's still quite a few lines of code here. So we have our using statements up here, which we don't have to have those. We have the namespace demo. We don't have to have that because we can, ex we can imply that based upon where it's at. And we have the class defined. Well, we've already lost that in, in um, C sharp nine, but we don't have to have that for our program or yeah, our program class because of the fact that we know that we have to have a starting place somewhere. So if we call the, the, um, the file name program.cs, we can imply the fact that that's the program class. Therefore we're good to go without having to do anything more than that. And so that cuts out three or I'm sorry, two layers deep of, of nesting. And it cuts out one, two, three, four, five, six lines of code that we really don't need. So now we're down to just this, I'm sorry, seven lines. We don't need that using statement either. And we're down just to the static void main. And since it's program.cs, we can assume the top level code before you start calling methods, the top level code, that's going to be the program.cs itself. That's the actual code for program.cs because usually when you're setting up a, a program.cs and a static void main, you're not putting other methods in that same class because it's a special class. It's a special method. And you really try and call out from that. You're trying not to put other things in it. Well, this kind of helps you along that way and says, we're going to give you a way to do that. If that's what you want to do, you can still wrap it. You can still put the, the class name back in if you want, but this way, instead of having these two lines or this line, we've now dropped 10 lines of code that we don't need. That's just can be implied. So now we get right down to the code we write and we are three indents in. Okay. We've saved ourselves three indents in our code. So that's kind of the point here at .NET 6 is it's trying to eliminate the stuff that we can imply. And yeah, at the same time, if we say, no, that's not, I, I know that that's normally right, but that's not what I want to do here. Then you can go ahead and specify things like the namespace still. No problem. Go ahead and specify that. And we're just not going to make you do a, an indent for that. So 
that's going to save you some space as well. And you could still put the indents here if you wanted to, if you want to have multiple namespaces in one file, you can still do that. The option's still available to you, but there's a way now to really shortcut this and cut out a lot of the fluff that really is just fluff. It's really not necessary. Now, that does mean there is more to learn in some ways um, because there's some stuff that's behind the scenes, some stuff that's that's still there. It's just kind of hidden a little more. And yes, that is kind of a bummer, but the, the upside is that once you learn it, then there is um, you know less boilerplate code being written, less in front of your eyes you have to look through. I mean, look at the difference, okay? These are essentially the same bits, okay? I have three lines here instead of um, six lines of code. But besides that, the same same thing. And yet, this is really simple, and that is got a lot more to look at. So that's the kind of point here. And with namespaces, this is they're still there. They're still functioning the way that we've always had them function. It's just now they're kind of hidden in the background. They're assumed instead of required to be explicitly in front of us so that we can get to our actual code instead of focusing on the setup and teardown of our code. So that's kind of a deep dive in a namespaces, how they work, how they can be beneficial to us, how we can modify them, tweak them using things like um, our aliases, and then how to get into the new stuff with namespaces in .NET 6, how we can work with the um, the shortening of things and, and see how, you know, just having implied, implicit namespace, and how we can bring in namespaces um, in our implicit using so that we can not have to have these, or we can add them back in if we want to. How we can add using statements with aliases right in the, the, the CS proj file or in our usings file for global usings. There's a lot of cool new stuff with namespaces. Namespaces have finally gotten a little bit more love and a little bit more attention to um, kind of, again, reduce that boilerplate and at the same time, give us more features, more possibilities, not less. So hopefully that explains namespaces. If you have any questions, leave them down in the comments below. I also wanna hear what your thoughts are on the um, the new .NET 6 stuff, how they, they shorten things and have global usings and have uh, global aliases and implicit usings and all the rest of the, of the cool stuff that's going on. I want to know what your thoughts are on those. I know sometimes it can be, you know, one more new thing to learn, but at the same time, do you anticipate using these? Do you do you find that this might, you know, reduce the indents in your code or may make your code more readable? What are your thoughts on this? Leave them down in the comments. Let me know. I'll try to at least read over them and maybe interact on a few of those. All right. Thanks for watching. As always, I am Tim Corey.